Hello students, welcome to today's lesson video. Today's goal is going to be to continue to familiarize ourselves with PSA style questions, PSAT style questions that is, and continue to practice finding the volume of cylinders and cones along with finding missing dimensions such as radius and height. So uh, throughout this video, as typical, please go ahead and request uh, that the video be paused. I will also kind of cue you to pause at certain times. We're going to go in sections where I will model some of the questions, make sure that we are reviewing the different methods and workflow, and uh, make sure that you have uh, ample opportunity to go ahead and do certain pieces of the work. Okay, so with that being said, you should have this worksheet in front of you. Okay, if you do not, please go ahead and request it from your teacher. In a moment, we're going to go ahead and get right into the PSAT section. That'll be the front page. So here we go. For the PSAT practice, okay, remember each question is just to familiarize yourselves with ways the content you have already learned up to this point is phrased or presented. So uh, don't linger on one single question, but show enough work to make sure that you can substantiate your answer. Okay? There are four that are sitting in front of you. Okay? At this moment, okay, I'm gonna have you go ahead and start these and expect to take about five, six minutes. Okay? So with that being said, teacher, could you go ahead and pause this video? And then in, a, in about five, six minutes or when most of the class seem to have completed these, we'll go and unpause it and discuss the different answer choices. Go for it. All right, students, so you should have ample time to go ahead and finish these, but I'm gonna go ahead and discuss the first couple here and move on to the next two. So the first one okay, asks us which equation defines F? And if you notice, they're asking for us to take the information slope and that point and put it in slope intercept form, that classic Y equals MX plus B. On the screen, you should see most of the work that I determined. The slope was given was 3, and the y-intercept was negative 8 because x is equal to 0 when the y-intercept occurs. So the actual format, y equals mx plus b, you put 3 in for m, negative 8 for b, and your final answer would have been b. And in the second one, the nice thing about this is that they actually give you the formula. It says... They're asking for the area of the base of a triangular prism. So the volume of the triangle prism is equal to BH. So that's where I, you can see highlighted on the screen, V equals BH. Putting in what we know, 216 for V and 8 for height, you solve for B, which comes out to be 27. That's like finding the missing dimension, similar to some of the work we've already been doing with cylinders and cones. So uh, check, correct, adjust anything that you see on the board, and I'll move on to the next two questions in a moment. For the final two questions of the PSAT section, okay, in the third question, it's asking us to interpret what the y-intercept is. Don't forget that the y-intercept is the starting value. It's also called the initial something. Okay, In this case, it was the initial height. So uh, if you read through the story and unpack it, the height in inches of a typical apple tree when it is planted is what the y-intercept stands for. Continue to, to do a lot of these interpretation kind of questions. What do the numbers mean? Okay. On the last one, you, we have been exploring systems for quite a bit, so the only tricky part about this one is notice if we're going to use substitution and we want to know the value of x, we need to go ahead and take that second equation and rewrite it with x by itself. So to do that, I added 10y to each side. I'll show it on the board right now. And once I do that, it rearrange it where x is alone and it's equal to 16 plus 10y. Then from there, I can substitute it in to the other equation and highlight it on the screen. I did that in that highlighted step. Finishing from there, using our standard equation solving skills, we get y equals negative 2 and x equals negative 4. So the answer should have been C in this case. So zooming out here, all right, continued exposure to PSAT practice. Uh, if you notice, I did a lot of work, okay? Remember, the PSAT does not check your work, but you want to show enough work to substantiate your answers and to make sure that you feel pretty comfortable with what your response is. 
So with that being said, we are now going to flip gears to volume. So go ahead and switch over to the next page. And on this page, we're going to first start off with cylinders. And I'm going to model a couple of the questions just to kind of refresh us on some of the methods. And then from there, you'll have ample time to work on the remaining questions. So there's going to be one question from each of the sections on this first page with cylinders I'm going to do. So let's go ahead and look at something like number two. And if you look at number two, okay, it, it says find the volume of the cylinder, express your answer in terms of pi and round to the nearest tenth. So there's two answers we've been discussing. There's the in terms of pi, more of an exact answer, and then we approximate it around it once we calculate pi into whatever equation we're dealing with. So for a cylinder, recall our volume formula, V equals pi r squared h. Now I chose two because two, uh, this cylinder, it only has two measurements, but you just gotta be careful to make sure you pick the correct number to go into the correct dimension. So we have radius and height. The radius is always going to be part of the base circle. So two, in this case, is gonna be r. Nine is going to be h or height. Substituting the values in, and you can see and the first step, the most critical to make sure we put all the values in appropriately. From there, remember, we want the answer in terms of pi and rounded. So if it's in terms of pi, I highlighted what you're gonna go ahead and multiply out. You're gonna multiply two squared times nine. Use a calculator if you need, but two squared is four, four times nine is 36. And I'm gonna move it in front of the pi, and units is meters cubed. That's my first answer. That's in terms of pi. From there, okay, the approximate answer is just gonna be 36 multiplied by pi. You okay, use 3.14 for that case, and it comes out to be 113.04. It did ask us to round it to nearest tenth, so 113.04. It's just gonna be 113.0. So I'll just put down 113 meters cubed. So those are our two answers right there in terms of pi and approximate. And generally, as you work through this, it gets very repetitive because formula work is supposed to be. And additionally, keep an eye on your workflow. As you can see, I got my equals lined up. The substitution step is critical, the second step. And then after that, it's a lot of calculations and calculator work if needed. So with that being said, and that's question number two. Okay, kind of model the work. You're gonna be working on the remaining ones. Just be careful what they're giving you. We only need radius and height, but a big old hint on question number four, just be careful. They don't necessarily give you the radius. You may have to determine it. So just little things like that that you'll have to keep an eye on and track. So before we move on to giving you work time, I am gonna do one of the questions down below where you have to find a missing dimension. So let's scroll down to one of these, okay? So on all of these, you're gonna either find a the radius or you're going to find the height and it just depends on what the question asks you but no matter what we're going to go back to that original formula that we're dealing with so the one that I want to do is question number six okay so in question number six it says sports bottles shaped like a cylinder with a height of 19 centimeters and a volume of 731.2 cubic centimeters what is the diameter of the sports bottle so if we're dealing with diameter more than likely we're gonna to have to solve for the radius. Okay, remember, the diameter is twice the radius. So let's go ahead and put down our formula because we are still dealing with a cylinder. So it's pi r squared h, and we're gonna substitute everything we know. We know volume is 731.2, we know the height is 19. So putting that in, just like we do with the volume calculations above, you just gotta be careful to put in what you know and continue to use that formula as intended. From there, if you notice, we have that R squared, so we gotta make sure we're careful in dealing with that. Let me zoom in on it, and let's see if we can go ahead and solve this down. So typically at this stage, there's, you can, we gotta isolate R squared. Now, what I would do, I'm gonna kinda color code it here, is I would divide by nine pi on both sides. Okay, I can do that in one step because we're only dealing with multiplication on the other side. So if I 
Divide by 19 pi on both sides. You can see 19 and pi cancel out over here. And over on the left side, we're just dealing with a calculation that we can put in the calculator. So when you put in the calculator, just make sure you're careful. Since 19 pi is an expression, I want to put it in parentheses when I put it in the calculator. So with that being said, let's go ahead and calculate that out. It comes out to be 12.3. I did round and okay, approximately r squared. Now I did use 3.14 for pi. I know our calculators do have the pi key, so if you choose to use that, your number will be just a little bit larger. Instead of 12.3, it would probably be like 12.4 or something like that. From there, we're going to go ahead and isolate r by square rooting both sides, because remember, square rooting cancels out a square, so we're left with just r on that side. And using our calculator once again, square root of 12.3 comes out to be right around 3.5. So the radius in this case is 3.5. But going back to the question, it then said, what is the diameter of the sports bottle? So the diameter is double that. So my final answer in this case, diameter is seven. Okay, and what's the units here? Centimeters. So at this point, okay, that gives you a look at both styles of questions that we're dealing with when it comes to cylinders, okay, finding the volume and then finding a different dimension. Now in number five and seven, okay, and you'll notice that you may have to find the height, okay, you may have to find the radius, just be careful okay, what you're solving for. It's still the same work because you are using the formula. So at this stage, let's go ahead and pause this video. Uh, you'll have plenty of work time, I would say probably around 10 minutes to go ahead and work through this page. And then I will pop up the answer key and discuss anything that, you, that, that seems important on this page and then we'll move on to the cone section. So go ahead and pause this and continue to work on these remaining questions on your own. All right, students, we should have return. Um, on the board, you should see the answer key for the first uh, four questions. I did not show the full work. That is available in the, print, uh, in the scanned answer key that is linked in the homework calendar in Schoology. But uh, double check your work to see if you got an answer similar to what I have. If not, okay, you can always recheck, correct, and see what happened. Most often, the major issues will be that you swap the height and the radius. For example, number one, the radius is seven, not three. Three is the height, okay? And the other mistakes that sometimes or often happen, especially working with numbers of this scale, is calculator errors. So double check one through four. And then I'm gonna scroll down to five, six, and seven. So the height should have been two feet for number five, and for number seven, the radius is three units. Now. When you are working through this, especially on number five, uh, there's little things that you're going to have to catch. The diameter that they gave you was 11 feet. So when using the formula, we have to use the radius, which is five and a half feet. So those are things that you got to kind of double check. If you had any major issues with number five, that could be one of them. Okay? But otherwise, you're still continuing to use that formula and solving for the missing dimension. All right. So... At this point, I'll show the entire answer key in full, okay? Go ahead and pause this video if needed, okay? Don't forget, I said the full worked out answers are in the scanned answer document in Schoology. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on now to the cone section and discuss and model a couple of these questions, all right? So similar to what we are dealing with with, with the cylinders, we're gonna go ahead and use a formula and work through it. Very similar setup, but for the formula, I'm gonna write it here on the side, there are two versions of this formula we can utilize. The first one is pi r squared h divided by three, the whole thing. We can do that because it's all multiplication and division up there. Though, in the book, in many books, you'll also notice it as one third pi r squared h. So either version is fine. Personally, I use the first one, just seems to be a little more accessible at times. All right, so with that being said, let's go ahead and model the workflow for these different problems. I'm gonna do just a couple, just like with the cylinder one, and then have you continue and finish. 
Let's go and zoom in on number two. So it says, find the volume of the cone, express your answer in terms of pi, and round to the nearest tenth. Standard instructions. So just be careful, once again, look at what's given. I noticed that they gave us 12 feet as the diameter, so the radius is gonna actually equal six. The height is that height in the very center, right, going up to the peak of seven. So write the formula down, V equals pi r squared h over three. I recommend writing the formula down every time just to kind of get it locked in your brain. It's not mandatory. That's what I've been discussing with my classes, but you should write the formula down until you feel pretty comfortable with it. Substituting all the pieces in, it gives V equals pi times six squared times the height of seven all divided by three. Now, because we are dealing with the volume, the cone formula, we do have to be careful when we put it in terms of pi. When we put it in terms of pi, typically what I do is do six squared times seven up top, then I divide that by three. You may end up getting some decimals or repeating decimals, but that is okay even in terms of pi. So let's go ahead and punch that out on the calculator. And in this case, we get a nice number of 84 pi feet cubed. And then, just like we did with cylinders, to get the approximation, I'm gonna go ahead and multiply 84 by 3.14, and I get 263.76, I'll round that to 0.8 feet cubed. So, there we go. Our standard workflow with formulas. Organize, okay? So, breaking it down again, don't forget the substitution step that you see me highlighting right there. When Doing it in terms of pi, multiply the top numbers and then divide it by three and place it in front of the pi. And then to get the approximate, multiply by 3.14. So at this stage, we should be fairly familiar with practicing this and working with this formula. It's a variation of the cylinder formula, so it's very, very similar. So you're gonna finish up one, three, and four on your own. Now, before we move on here, to work time, I am going to do one of the questions down below. So these are the finding the missing dimensions in the cones, and it says round to the nearest whole number. Okay, so we're just going to kind of get an approximation of these. So in both of them, you're either going to find the height or okay the radius. There's not too much more that you have to do. So for this first example, I'm going to find the height since we did the radius one previously. For number five, it says, a sorcerer's hat is shaped like a cone with a diameter of eight inches and a volume of 301.6 cubic inches. What is the height of the sorcerer's hat? So they gave us diameter of eight, so one of the first things I'm gonna do is kind of make a mental note that I'm, I need the radius and it's gonna be four. So I'm not gonna use eight. All right, so to find the height, we're gonna go and use the formula. V equals pi r squared h over three and substitute everything I know. So 301.6 is the volume. I got pi, I got radius four squared times the height, and we got divided by three. Now this is where we gotta be a little bit careful with this formula. That divide by three really kinda changes a little bit of the work that we have to do. My recommendation every time is the first step you should do is multiply by three on both sides. The reason you do that is that it will cancel out the three, the divide by three, and it's gonna create a larger number on the left side, but that's fine because now we've kind of gotten rid of that division and we have a smoother looking equation. So if I do that, I'm gonna get 904.8 equals, and I'm gonna just punch out four squared, that's 16. So pi times 16 times h. And look at that, it looks very similar to what we just did with the cylinder formula. That times three on both sides basically brings it back okay, to a format that we have seen before with the cylinder formula. I'm gonna divide by 16 pi the whole thing because I'm solving for height. And when I do that, 16 pi cancels out on the right side. And then when I put it in the calculator, don't forget to put parentheses around that 16 pi. So 904, 0.8 divided by 16 times 3.14, and I get somewhere around 18 point something. So it did ask us to round it to the nearest whole number. 18 is gonna be perfectly fine. So in this case, the sorcerer's hat will have a height is 
about 18 inches. Finish strong with the answer statement. So this is again, an example or modeling finding that hidden dimension. Okay? Just kind of be careful with your workflow. Uh, realize that times three, that first step, and okay? after we substitute everything is pretty important to kind of get rid of that division by three and make it a little smoother operation later on. All right, at this stage, that should model the last question I'm gonna showcase for you. Your job is to go ahead and finish the rest of these problems. And I'm gonna pause, uh, have you pause the video here and I'm gonna let it roll. I will put up the answer key in just a moment, but just in case uh, time has run out on this lesson, whatever is remaining, you are to go ahead and finish for homework, okay? And we will check it the next time I see you. So with that being said, work on this OIO, okay, on your own, and let the video go for a little bit and pause it, and the answer key will show up if you have time to finish this video. All right, students, answer sheet keys should be popping up on the board. So for one, two, three, and four, you can, I'll zoom in on that. You can see the volume calculations in terms of pi and approximate. I do wanna highlight a couple key things. Uh, if you look at what I just highlighted, uh, in terms of pi, it is okay to have a decimal, repeating decimal in front of it. 213.3 repeating pi is still considered an exact answer. And you can even see it in question number three, 60.75 pi, that is an exact answer. And then the approximation, once you calculate out 3.14. So double check that. Uh, the fully worked out answers are in the answer key scans in Schoology, as I mentioned previously. And pause this video if needed. I'm going to scroll to the bottom questions in just a moment. And here we go. So we did number five together. Number six, the radius is about 10 centimeters. Okay, uh, It's the same workflow as before, but when we're calculating radius, remember there's that square root inverse operation that you'll have to deal with. Okay, so with that being said, this concludes this video. Okay, Anything you did not uh, fully get or organize, you have the scanned answer key and work available and you can re-watch this video. It is linked in the homework calendar. So with that, all right, thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day.